appreciate it, but it's not uh, not going to end the world if you're not here. Um, let's see. Okay, it looks like the auto host is off. So um, uh, first things first, I'm not sure if uh, I don't know the dates of the uh, Starfall event. I don't know if it continues on through to the exact end of the month or if it comes off today with the update. So if you haven't uh, taken advantage of that, um, you might want to uh, get in on that now because uh, if you haven't logged in, you know, this would be your last chance to get that last little goodie bag or whatever. Um, I don't even know what was in it. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was the disco ball and a couple other things like some toys or something. I'm not sure. Um, but hopefully everybody enjoyed their Star of Fall um, celebration for this month. Um, and all the free goodies uh, that were offered up and, of course, um, some of the deals, I think, that popped up into the cash shop as well. Um, now, usually uh, I kind of stick with um, my queue list, uh, but uh, I've been getting a lot of um, uh, suggestions from other players uh, recently, more so than I have in the past, which is fantastic. I, pr I appreciate that for sure. Um, so since they're kind of bringing these to my attention, I think we're going to um, try to drop by some of those. Now this one in particular, um, the builder, uh, Siskui, uh, requested that I uh, make a special visit, uh, which I'm happy to do. Uh, apparently Siskui has um, acquired a new job that is going to uh, keep them from visiting uh, the stream as much as they'd like or if at all. So. Um, this will be the last opportunity that they can uh, join us. Uh, and I wanted to take that chance to uh, showcase their plot for um, everyone today. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take because Siskui took the time <laughs> to uh, set up a full on um, written up tour guide for me. <laughs> And I was running through it this morning um, when I got my mail open, and I was like, wow, this is pretty detailed. So I'm going to try and do my best to um, uh, lay it all out for you guys, uh, take it step by step, give you any additional information that Siskui provided in the, the write-up that they sent me, um, and hopefully get the full-on um, uh, experience of this plot. Um, I know it's something that I think others would appreciate that I included for other plots that we visit. You know, if it would be, you know, grand if I could get in contact with every single builder that we showcase here. Um, I had tried that in the past and it was proved problematic for a number of reasons, which I've explained in the past. Um, but when a builder takes the initiative to do that uh, on their own, um, I'm more than willing to um, uh, extend uh, things out a little more than I probably would have if they hadn't provided all the additional information. Um, uh, again, I know it's something that folks wish I would probably do to others, uh, like maybe even like do like little personal interviews as to, you know, the inspiration behind their plot, um, why they did this this way or that way, what pieces they use, that kind of stuff. While we try to cover some of that by just kind of guesswork, um, or my own assumptions of certain things. Um, it's not as uh, detailed as it could be if, you know, we had the insight of the builder right with us. But um, so today is kind of a special thing, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, if we have time after we're done here, um, we'll visit another plot or two. It just depends on uh, how long it takes us to get through. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Um, so let's just get started. This is uh, Proto City. Um, again, Sis Siskui, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Siskui Nanamook, I think is the full word. Um, but it's on the player called Zemea Vlaskava. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. But um, we are here at Proto City. And let me just uh, pull up the document they sent me. Oh my gosh, I'm going to like. I got like too many panels open over here. Okay, so um, I've got my um, dashboard closed. So if 
anything kind of messes up, if suddenly um, the stream stops or something, let me know in chat and I'll check it. Right now I've just got the, this little tour guide thing open up. And uh, good morning, Bones and Siskui. Um, I would say good morning to Poi, but uh, she left me a note saying that she may not be able to make it today. She's had a rough couple of days, so um, our thoughts are with her and hers. Um, so we are unmodded sort of today. We just got the mod bot. So you guys need to behave. <laughs> okay, so um, let me uh, look here. There's like, I don't know where to start. You just kind of went crazy with this, didn't you, Cisco? <laughs> Basically, the description of the plot is um, it's uh, it's they call it a sky plot complex rather than a single sky plot. I, I think um, once the communities feature really becomes a thing and is gone live and provides more opportunity for uh, builders to expand their ideas. I think there might be some um, either additions or changes uh, that uh, folks like doing the city uh, type of builds um, and that kind of thing um, will uh, have more opportunity to kind of uh, really put something elaborate, more elaborate than they already have. Um, but um, this one is probably the uh, a great example, one of the great examples of how one can uh, develop a, an actual cityscape, town kind of thing. We've seen some villages and stuff um, and really make it uh, seem realistic, uh, even though it's on a single plot. So you can imagine what the builders will be able to do and, and accomplish once they're able to link multiple plots together. It'll be just like crazy. I can imagine it's going to be really crazy. Um, so, uh, the way they showed this to me in their little uh, sample images is the plot is divided into two districts. There's the, um, the noble district on um, the left side here, which you can see here with the buildings. This is where the residence, uh, residential part is, um, and they describe it as having a more elegant design. And then on the other side is more the industrial part. Um, and it is designed, the, the plot itself is designed um, after a typical 50s entertainment area. Um, so there's a cinema, there's a diner, there's a roller rink, and uh, I believe a, an underground disco. Uh, so the tour in total has, they can call it uh, 14 stations. 14 stops or whatever. Um, and we're going to start here at the entrance and uh, move our way through the industrial part. And then we'll come back around. I guess it's counterclockwise is the way we're going to go. So um, I'm just going to read what they wrote. <laughs> so uh, it's going to sound pretty robotic, I'm sure, but uh, apologies on that. Uh, it says, uh, you reach a Proto City visit uh, via a Protostar transport system. After that, it looks like a city skyline with streets and houses and, and the like. Uh, move along the sidewalk next to the public mailbox until you reach the first crossroads. So I guess we're going to go this way. So right off the bat, though, I love when um, builders can give you uh, uh, a nice overall view. It's not only great for screenshots for their own plots, um, but it's just, it's like, bam, you know, there's like this nice um, uh, overall view. It leads to anticipation because you see all these buildings, you're thinking, whoa, you know, what's going to be in that one and what's this one? And, and it encourages the visitor to want to explore. Um, it's not so much when uh, you enter a plot and there's like nothing there. You know, they just have their little spaceship in the middle. There might be some fantastic stuff going on in that spaceship, but if they don't have something that catches the viewer, the, the visitor, and encourages them to go out into the plot, it can be, you know, a little disappointing. Um, so having a view like this and seeing all of the things already visible, you just kind of want to like, ah, you just want to run through the whole place. Um, 
So you can see they did a custom mailbox here. It's got an actual functioning mailbox inside. We've seen lots of others do it. I've done it myself. I actually prefer that. Um, it's not that I hate the designs of the actual prefab um, uh, mailboxes, but typically for the themes that I build, they never match or they just, they just look out of place. So I prefer to build my own. And you can see this is a fantastic example. Um, it's just some, uh, looks like tubes or, or curved walls, cylinders maybe, um, and then some uh, draken walls it looks like, and then a silver, uh, the flat metal table for the base. Very clever, looks what you would expect a, a city type mailbox to look like. Again, with a lot of the city builds, um, we have a great opportunity for those that are looking for different styles of buildings, um, uses for uh, decor as uh, faux doors and things, and even how they mix and match the windows. Like this one's upside down, but it, it fits nicely. Um, and like the roofs, those are, uh, it looks like there's bits of um, pillars, there's uh, exile walls, and the brick here that you see, those are the uh, cellar entrances. That's why you see these brackets uh, here and there. We're all the time looking for textured materials and uh, we don't have a lot of stone bits that work well for walls. So we make do with what we have. So uh, using the cellar entrances is a great example of how they've built this up. I mean, look at this building. Let me see if I can get a better shot here. Just look at that nice roofing uh, just it I couldn't say exactly what it reminds me of but it, it's a really nice building they even managed to do it over the top of the entrance almost looks like one of those um, covered bridges the way they've got it set up uh, you can see they've done the same thing with the little uh, walls or barriers or whatever you want to call them. Those are the uh, Oren walls with that little bit of stone feature. Again, you know, you could probably use like some of the ones, uh, the uh, rusted fence uh, pieces that you can get. Ugh, I a sneeze coming on. Um, but they took it and uh, I don't think I've ever seen anyone use that like that. And just made an interesting design. Looks like the edge of a different type of wall, a darker wood. Just made it look a little different. Some uh, would probably uh, choose to do more greenery, having like little inset flowers inside this is like little flower beds. That would be something, or add bushes. You can see they've used bushes over here, the hedges. Um, but they chose to leave these blank, and it looks nice and clean, just what you'd expect from a, a, a tidy city. It's not like a, a hobo town or anything like that. Um, the doors, uh, it's a combination of, I think it's the tree picture, uh, just because of the frame of it, and then the back side of uh, another picture. Um, we've seen it used for like cabinet work and uh, uh, yeah, mostly kitchen cabinets and things like that. But we, I think we've also seen it for like stairs and even big buildings and stuff, uh, just because it has a, an interesting wood texture on it. Uh, the handles are, of course, the tops of, um, looks like bottles. But it's like a very simple, it's just three pieces, but very effective. It looks just like a door, you know, what you would expect. There's this one. They've got like a little peephole built in. I don't know what that item is. It kind of reminds me of the porthole window, but it looks too small for that, so I don't know. Okay, so as soon as we go to the first crosswalk, um, and that gives us our first view of the, oops, the Proto Burger uh, place, I guess is what this is. Uh, would you? <laughs> well, yeah, again, 
I'm always fascinated with these kind of builds because there's looks like there's so much that you've managed to pack in and uh, then someone like me that's like does one like little tiny corner and I max everything out. I don't know how you guys manage to squeeze in so much within that limit. Yeah, it's the details that eat you. You know, being able to, I mean, just think of how many pieces these little crosswalks take. You know, if you could find a, an item that could give you the same thing but fewer pieces, that would be awesome. But, you know, you have to work with what you got. Um, again, these appear to be the, um, the cellar entrances. So it's the same thing that's being used for the buildings, but just the edge of it for those crosswalks. Crosswalks there. So um, the little blurb that it says is um, the protostar standee um, was pimped out with a soft drink and a burger. So you can see this is the Winterfest standee that has the uh, Papa Phineas on it. And they've added the soft drink to it and then a burger. The burger is just uh, layers of tacos and um, uh, bowls. Very clever use of the tacos to make that nice, uh, like, double Big Mac or whatever it is. <laughs> hey, Poi, I'm glad you can make it. I wasn't sure. I let everybody know you might not, but uh, I'm glad you were able to. So a very clever use of the standee being an advertisement uh, piece. Um, yes, he's wearing his holiday outfit, but um, adding these extra little elements um, just changes it up uh, and makes it fit the theme of this particular section of the plot. Um, we've seen other people do that with um, like some of the uh, billboard signs, posters. They've added elements to them just to change uh, what the poster is about, that kind of thing. So this is a, a super example of how to use that. <laughs> it's a taco burger. That's what it is. <laughs> Okay, so it says, um, I'm squinting because my eyes are still, I'm, I woke up late and I'm still half asleep. So, uh, it says to the left, you can see the outdoor area of the uh, Proto Burger with a typical children's playground and some sitting corners. So you've got... Um, it's, it's like you would see at the McDonald's or the Quick or whatever fast food restaurant is prevalent in your area. Um, you can see they're using regular benches and tables. Uh, the little play thing here is made out of uh, proto, proto, hover, bar, uh, hover park pieces, um, including domes and the little connector bits to make the slides. A uh, little bit of a ladder here. Kind of your typical thing. Um, some places would have like the bouncy castle and stuff, but this is probably a, a great representation of that. Um, you can see that the benches have a little bit of exile floors uh, or walls to make some of the benches out here. And of course, you've got the uh, the trees. And I want to say it's probably. Um, Upside down snowy hills for the greenery here with uh, cylinders or um, uh, tubes or whatever for this decoration. Notice it's like one kind of tube and then a different kind and then different alternating. It helps accent the, the, uh, the textures being used. It just makes it look nice. I love these burny bits. Probably one of my favorite greeneries. Okay, now it says don't walk into the Proto Burger just yet, so we'll move on to the next uh, bit. Um, the next one is the Community Center, just straight across here. Again, you can see they're using the um, 
the cellar entrance for most of the building, you know, taking advantage of that nice fancy brick uh, pattern. Uh, the community center uh, is just an outside building, so it's a faux building. You can't actually go inside it. Um, I would assume it would be like, uh, well, community center for us was always where the, um, the elderly would go for their bingo sessions, or you could um, take some classes about certain things. But it also might be considered as like what some would say is like a city hall kind of thing, um, where you would get uh, registry for living in the town, um, you know, important kind of things. Um, if you have a pothole that needs fixing, that's where you would uh, go and put your claim in so that the city could take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. Um, but again, you can see they've got the exile floors, uh, exile walls for the roofs. Um, it's just done nice and neatly. A little bit of pillars for trim. Um, notice again that they're changing the the orientation of the windows just to mix it up a little bit, which is always nice. Uh, for the doorway here, where the folks are lined up, it looks like one of the beds. And I'm not sure what the blue part is coming from. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think this is a clever use of the bed. It's, I don't know which bed it is. It's just like the wooden bed or something. And you're just seeing the headboard of it. The one with the acorns on top, I think. And again, the frame of the door is a, another one of the uh, cellar entrances. Now, if you see the flashing um, light, looks like lightning strikes or whatever, that's caused by um, some of these windows. Uh, there's like two of them. One is, uh, I think it's the haunted window, window, and then one is like the train window or something. And the train one, um, it kind of moves across almost like a a, night, a, a lighthouse light. Um, we've seen some use that. And then the other one, the, the haunted one, I think, is more like a lightning strike where it flashes. And it's one way of um, not only bringing attention to this building, but, uh, uh, I don't know, just adds a little extra element to it. Um, a lot of people prefer to use it in like haunted houses, um, but I've seen some uh, use it like very cleverly. Like there was one, I think they had a, a photograph um, uh, building where they had someone set up with a camera and where people could pose for pictures and they had the one that flashed for like the camera flash. So I thought that was pretty funny. Okay, so uh, yeah, it says the, the community center is just outside building. You can't go inside, but as it should be, every community center has a waiting line. So there you go, you got your waiting line. Um, yes, one of them is a ghosty figure. Um, I guess even the spirits have um, some issues that they have to set out. So there's that. Good morning, Flood. Glad you could join. Okay, so moving on. Um, Oh, okay, I get the joke. <laughs> so it feels sometimes as if you wait forever. Oh, look, one human apparently did. So I guess they <laughs> they passed away in line, so their ghost is in the place. <laughs> that's, uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it says, by the way, at the back uh, on that image, uh, you can uh, see the lights on the, the facade. They are... From spooky windows, okay, spooky, not haunted. Um, I use them to simulate car lights driving by. Okay, so that's what they're using them here for. But I have seen them use them in different instances, like the the photographer's uh, shop, um, which I thought was pretty fun. So they say, moving on. Let's see. So the next stop is um, next to the community center is the taxi stand. And we're all familiar with that. They have some of these in uh, every little major hub 
in the Wildstar open world. So, um, oh, at the back entrance, let me see. Where do you see that? Back entrance? <laughs> Am I supposed to find one? I like the walls here. Um, let me just say, I was calling these hedges earlier, but they're not. It looks like the bottoms of the Draken fencing. Just FYI, they've got the curved one here and then the straight ones. Yeah, that's why it looks a little bumpily. Probably if we look close, some of them might even show the little skulls that are in there, but I think they've got it sunk down well enough. Was it here for the flashing car? I am so bad at directions. <laughs> it's a wonder I'm being able to follow. Um, the bracketry here, the walls, those are, I think, pressure dividers, if I remember rightly. Um, anyway, it says, uh, for those who don't want to come with the transportation system but prefer to fly with a hollow taxi up to the sky. So um, we've seen a few players actually build their own taxis. I think it was Bucky that had a, a one actually. Um, but again, with the decor limits and as much detail that's already in this plot, it would not surprise me if Siskui is completely maxed out here and just not able to add those kind of details. Um, if ever they up the decor place limits or maneuver it around so that maybe you can um, specify that you want 3,000 for outside and, and uh, 2,000 for inside instead of, you know, 2,500 in and out or however it adds up, um, I think people would add a lot more detail than they already have. Um, just like we've come across some plots that seem unfinished and it's not by choice, it's just they've run out of, of decor place uh, space. So um, I think uh, it would be fun to be able to add a little tax here. Who knows, maybe they will actually give us a taxi decor that could eventually be snuck in here somehow. So that would be something to look forward to. Um, again, with a lot of the builders um, that we've come across, um, not only do they often or sometimes uh, just clear everything out and rebuild something new because they have a different idea or whatever, they're always evolving their plots. It's one of the fun things about um, this, especially when a new set of decor comes out, like we just had the sandcastle stuff um, back onto the cash shop um, and some of like the Dominion stuff. Once new materials come out, it's like uh, it's like a reflex action. A lot of builders have to go in and go, hmm, this would look a lot better this way with this piece of decor than what I had before, and they'll upgrade it. And so adding little features like this, so this would be something they would probably want to add at a future date if possible with some kind of a taxi thing. Okay, so uh, let me get back on track here. Um, uh, next, we come now to our first bigger spot on the map, the car cinema um, or grinder cinema. It is placed in the industrial area on an old junkyard. You enter the area through a gate placed beneath a huge generator. Uh, on your left, you can see the movies list, and on your right is a little ticket stand. So let me go this way. Um, I just want to mention these buildings here, one here and some of these like skyscraper bits. Um, a lot of that is the, I think it's the metal container. Uh, the one kind of looks like for like old train cars. And uh, it looks like maybe some technophage stuff like the bracketry or whatever. It's either that or one of the red moon lights that's been modified um, for color with uh, the color shifting. So here's the theater car, they call it the car cinema. Um, we probably would just call it a drive through. That's, I think that's what it's supposed to be similar to. Because I remember, I, I asked my husband if he's ever went to a drive through or a drive-in, a drive-in. And uh, 
uh, he's like, no. And I was like, I can remember my dad having to put this huge speaker on the window so that we could hear the film that was playing on. They had like a little playground in front and everything. But yeah, uh, a drive-in is uh, what this is supposed to be. So here's the selection of films. Great way to show off your posters. Again, a lot of people just do the poster wall kind of thing in a house. Um, but being able to find other ways of displaying the posters without blatantly just showing them off. So as a, a cinema listing, um, we've seen people use them as book covers, um, uh, like uh, I've, I've, I've used them myself as like little candy bar wrappers, like in a snack shop. Um, there's been a few that actually have like magazine racks and, and things like that. Uh, just finding fun ways of doing it without, you know, just forcing it. It doesn't seem forced this way when you kind of introduce it as part of a, a particular section. So I like that. Um, of course, you're using curved glass for the covering here. Um, let's see. Is this the ticket thing? I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like this is okay. Um, the shelving is from uh, Winterfest, I guess. Uh, you can tell they're pretty bare. And again, I think that's mostly due to the fact that the decor limit is limited so much. So details like that, um, they can't really take advantage. Um, especially for those of us that like the details, we like to throw in as much as possible. So it's a, uh, a give and take as far as, okay, where do I want that detail to go? Where is it most important? And clearly, uh, I think the snack booth itself took on more priority than um, the display shelves where all of the little goodies can be bought. Now this, I think, is fun. It looks like a little, I don't know, adver advertisement bot. Let me see. Let me see if it has anything on here. Um, okay, it's it's called. They're calling it a Protomon, a little protostar helper. So yeah, maybe they announced the latest um, when the film's getting ready to start to let everybody know, you know, get your drinks and get out there or whatever. Um, looks like the bottom of the little snow, um, snow globe, I think is inside there. And then they've got a couple of, uh, what are those things called? I think it's the Winterfest emblem. I always look at it and just imagine it being like a biker's helmet. And then the little blinky light on top, that's from a detonator uh, controller thing. It's the same one that people use that blinking light for like spelling out um, exit or enter or, you know, ladies and men's for the bathroom signs and stuff like that. It's the same thing used for my bakery sign as well. So if we come over here to the snack area, Again, I think they prioritize the snacking area over the, the souvenirs, which I think is a good idea because who doesn't love finding interesting ways of showing off different kinds of foods? So um, I think they're using the tacos as nachos. I could be wrong, but let me see. I, I don't see anything specifically mentioning what's being used here and why. But um, It uh, looks like um, nachos, the tacos being used for nachos, and then they got the different dips here, like the cheese dip and, I don't know, salsa for the top of it, different sized bowls. Um, over here you have the uh, various sizes of the snack bags. Again, clever use of the uh, color shifting to kind of indicate different differences. They probably could have done the same thing to the drinks as well if they'd wanted. Um, the drink stand itself, again, another fun use of the posters to indicate that there's different flavors for the different drinks. Um, it looks like this is uh, 
flat metal tables for the most part um, with the travel posters and then um, a little graded shelf for the tray there. And back here, I think, is probably representative of the popcorn machine, would be my guess. Um, again, flat metal tables, um, travel posters, looks like the top of a lamp, one of the um, uh, Arctera lamps, I think, frost glow lamps or whatever it's called. Uh, the brackets are just from the tables. That's why they, you see that. Um, as far as popcorn, if you're really intent on looking for items that could represent that, um, especially now that we have the color shifting available, you could probably change the colors of like some of the berries, the hanging fruit. Um, I've used uh, spider eggs in the past. Um, I stuck with the white. But if you're looking for like that golden butter look, um, you could probably use the color shifting to change that. It's just there's so many that you have to pile in um, that it might not be cost efficient. Um, but uh, let's see what else. Um, piles of the gold, the um, I think it's called the treasure treasure hoard or something, treasure pile, one of those. Uh, the treasure pile itself has like the um, the vases and stuff in it, but if you can find the, I think it's called the dragon hoard treasure pile thing. There's one that has the vases and then there's one that's just the pile of gold. Um, you could use that. Um, I've seen a few try to use like the hay piles, but that's a little different. The texture uh, is a little off. Um, but the, the gold piles work really good. But, um, uh, of course, the doors, um, I don't know what these represent uh, other than possibly, like, um, one is to go in and one is to come out. I have no idea. But it's uh, it looks like um, the spaceship windows being used for the doors. I'm not sure what this piece is. Looks familiar, but I, I honestly am not positive. But I love the little setup. Um, of course, the sneeze guard stuff is just curved glass and then regular uh, framed glass. Yes, there's the gap here on the ends, but you know nobody's going to really um, be a stickler about that, I don't think. Yeah, I love, I love little details like that. Those are fun. Yeah, I th I'm not sure, but I think the uh, the one that doesn't have the vases and stuff, I think that's just a random world drop. And usually I find mine on the auction house. You just have to keep your eye open for it. Uh, and like I said, the hanging fruit, like in the past, to use the brown one, not the, the purple one, but I used the brown one. And to me, it, looked, it ended up looking more like dog food than than popcorn but that was all I could think of at the time it was like the very first time I tried to do like an, an at home theater kind of thing okay it says on the place in front of the cinema you can see the parking lots big enough for two grinder uh, grinders standing next to each other and a speaker to order more snacks so um, inside you've got these little booths or whatever you want to call them I got the speakers. It's basically a maintenance platform, uh, a couple of dividers, pressure dividers, and then the detonators stuck in there. Very clever. Um, they say it's for grinders, but you know, if somebody wanted to make it more like it's for um, an actual vehicle, like Bucky with all of uh, his cars and stuff, you could have you know actual just full size vehicles in here as well. Um, on the right, behind some movie posters, are the public toilets. So that would be over here. And I think each door represents um, 
a bathroom stall and they're saying that if it's lit up that means that someone's in there right now so these are occupied stalls and these are unoccupied <laughs> which is kind of a fun way of doing that uh, again this you know it's fun to know the logic behind certain aspects of uh, uh, a plot because uh, you know some things are left to interpretation and others you know they probably hope that their visitors are catching on what what they're doing um, but uh, without them actually expressly telling you that uh, maybe not everyone would catch that they would think maybe that it's just three doors and these are just something else but yeah I like that explanation uh, at the back under the screen is some leftover junk and it is in the end uh, still a junkyard so the theater was built over the junkyard now the drive-ins that I'm familiar with this would be where the little kitty playground would be like a swing set a teeter-totter and a little merry ground it was designed so that the parents that were actually there to watch the film could send their kids off to the front and they could be noisy as they wanted it didn't bother anybody in the cars but this is of course to show um, that this is built on top of a junkyard place so there's just a bunch of trash now it may seem easy to just throw in a bunch of junk and make it look trashy but again there was a lot of care and time taken in placing everything so that it looks trashy but it was it's a Planned chaos, I guess, is probably the best way to describe it. Um, some of the items we see, there's like a bust here, the back of it for the wood. Um, the tires, some of them are regular tires, but like this here, this is the uh, garage themed um, coffee table, just upside down and sunk in, so you only see the, the ice chest there. Um, there's a chimney piece. Um, some chairs, the uh, graded floor panel, some more of the uh, pressure dividers, like maybe they trashed one of the little booths here, some engine parts, just a lot of different stuff. Um, again, uh, for junk piles, treasure piles, uh, attics, um, those kind of places are perfect for throwing in things that maybe just had some extras of uh, or something that doesn't quite fit the theme and you just want to kind of throw it out there. That's a great way to, to get, you know, toss the junk out and, and make it look like rather than, you know, specifically buying something just because it looks junky, um, that kind of thing. Okay, so um, next to the big generator room, you can see a resting area. This way you don't need to leave the area in between movies. Um, it's a bit unclean, but it's still really comfy. So I guess that's um, over here. A little rest area. <laughs> so they're using... Um, tires for their seats again that's the uh, garage themed uh, coffee table so you can see there's that i don't know ice cooler or whatever and they've got that big one over here so a little messy but it's a little rest area that you come and, and chillax in between the films or if the film's really long and it has a intermission or whatever uh the generator room, you can try to get up there, but it really is just a big room with an even bigger exile generator used as a projector. Actually, you can use it if you manage to get up there and control the light that is projected on the screen, but that is just a gimmick. So they're talking about this thing here, the little tower building. Now, notice the ladder here. They didn't use the traditional ladder. It's like hammers. Um, I don't know if I can get up there or not. I will try. See if I can yeah, at least get a little closer.
I don't know if I can make that jump. Ooh, that was so bad. Not even close. Is it easier to get up on the other side, maybe? No, it doesn't look like it. But um, you can see this is the projector room right there. And if you get close enough, you can click the generator and actually turn the light off and on. They're just using one of the Winterfest posters as a screen. Uh, you could probably use um, the, the warning sign if you want to pretend like it's an advertisement. Um, some might even go to the trouble of making their own actual scene. I've seen several uh, do like kind of mural type of things with like space, you know, planets and a little spaceship and, and some kind of stuff like that. Hey, Faye, good morning. Oh, do you need the Explorer jump? Well, see, that's just tricky. <laughs> you need to make it easy for us others, non-explorers. <clears throat> uh, but again, you can see it's... Uh, hammers for the ladder type thing, um, there's pillars, there's archways. Um, this part here is the Osun uh, metal graded floor or graded metal floor or however you say it. It's the one from um, Arctera. Uh, comes relatively early uh, if you get the, uh, not renown. Uh, reputation for that particular faction there works really good. Uh, up here for the little overhang, um, I think that's just uh, boardwalk pieces. Again, mostly the metal containers for a lot of the big building parts. Same way here. It's a great little idea. Again, I imagine if there was more decor space, they would actually add in their own grinders to uh, give indication of what they in, uh, what they intend for these to be used as. Um, we've seen many grinders, uh, examples, you know, motorbikes and stuff. But again, you could probably fit in a little car or something um, as well. Have a little kid come in with his little wagon with a couple of friends, that kind of thing. Okay, um, parking lot uh, next to the Proto Burgers is our next stop. I guess it's right here. And it says the uh, we're still not going into the Proto Burger itself, um, but you can see um, the entrance, which would be here, I guess. And, um, oh gosh, did I like, all right, here, here we go. Uh, the smoking area next to it and next to that, two parking lots with a little custom built car because driving on a sky plot with only one street going in a circle, why not? So this apparently is the entrance, and this is the smoking area. People can come out, catch a smoke without having to give their secondhand smoke to the patrons inside. And then you have the little parking lot here, even with the fuel pump. Um, this part here, of course, is the graded floor panel, uh, just upside down and sunk down so it looks like a little parking space. The little truck, kind of car thing here. This is super cute. Again, we've seen many different types of vehicle builds and it never ceases to amaze me how people will take some of the same items that someone else uses and combine them in a completely different way um, and come up with something that's uniquely theirs. So here we have a couple of the uh, wagon bits from uh, Shades Eve. It's not the ones with the effigies in them. I think this is the empty one that you could get um, during the event. It's a couple of those. Uh, and then um, an Osun uh, emblem for the front for the little, I don't know what they call that, hood ornament. Um, flat metal tables for the cover back here. And then um, 
exile tables for the cover of the bed and the hood. And then you can see they've got another bench in there for seating. And then a lever switch for the gear shift. Now some will go ahead and go into even more detail and add an actual dashboard with a glove box. Um, some of the favorites for steering wheels is either um, a plate um, on the uh, stuck onto like a a pillar or probably the more realistic one would be the gear um, the garage themed uh, table lamp it actually looks like a muffler um, with the steering wheel on the top and a lot of people like to use that um, I've seen some use bowls for the steering wheel uh, I'm sure you could use like the Orin windows as well uh, especially with the color shifting you don't have to have it like super bright <laughs> yeah I know I'm just giving examples you know for people that might want to finish their car and have the space that's what they can use um, but clearly again it's one of those uh, how much detail are you willing to go into and, and counting that your decor limit is limited as much as it is that you just kind of have to go well We'll just go without the steering wheel. <laughs> you can just pretend it's like, I don't know, maybe one of them thought cars that just follows instructions or something. And you don't need a steering wheel. One of, like a bot vehicle or something. Okay, so next, let's see. <clears throat> next is the Cargo Brawl. Um, they've got it written down as Get Ready to Rumble. <laughs> Welcome to the Cargo Brawl, an illegal little protostar game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the rules are easy. Two teams with two players each. One player in the cage. Second controls the cargo stacker. So this is what we're talking about here. So here's the announcer. And you've got your two cargo holds. Uh, if you're not familiar with this particular item, it's one of the daily login rewards. I will mention again, um, if you haven't reached the day, the unlock for this, but you're desperate to have it, if you know of a friend or something that you trust to give them roommate rights to temporarily, um, if they've unlocked it but you haven't, they can uh, purchase it for you. Because um, it just shows up on the vendor if your character has actually unlocked it so someone that's unlocked it could come and buy it for you and uh, and then be removed from roommate rights and then you have uh, the little things the same is true for the uh, the starfall uh, fireworks decor with the crate and all the different fireworks that you can get um, if someone's unlocked it and you haven't you can ask them to purchase the items for you and send it to you that way um, I mean they have to be roommate because they can't be on their plot and buy it and then give it to you because it's like soul bound or whatever. But if they're a roommate and they have it unlocked on that character, they can purchase it. It'll go directly to your plot's crate and then you're good to go. Um, so, yeah, it says um, one player in the cage, second controls the cargo stacker. The cage is in a magnetized stream um and is moved when the cargo stacker arm is moved the gunners in the cage um have and what is that Ant antithesis guns their goal is to shoot the other player's cage out of the magnetized stream the gunner who crashes down with his cage loses the game even if they don't admit it, uh, admit it, bets are most welcome. So it's like a fight club thing with, with cranes. <laughs> um, but yeah, there you go. You got your little cage. The cage is just the, it's the one with the dead canary in there. It's, that's pretty disturbing. They've got dead birds that they're standing on, but <clears throat> a clever use for them. Usually you see the, the cargo um, grabbers with just crates that people are moving something heavy um, but this is the fun little idea of making it like a more like a fight club kind of thing and again it's a fun use of the welders those are also uh, a daily login reward um, 
So again, if you haven't unlocked it yet and you're desperate to have some, you could always just ask a friend to uh, purchase them for you. <laughs> yeah, first rule of Crane Club, don't talk about Crane Club. <laughs> Something, it's not underground though, it's, it's clearly visible for everybody to see. Okay, so um, next is the star rocket. Um, where is that? I think that's this here, this building. Right here. Uh, the next bigger spot on the sky plot is the star rocker. It is a little roller rink, as you could see them in the 50s. The entrance is in the middle, seen above on the screen, which is right here. Enter the rink and sit down on a bench and get your roller shoes on, or in this case, get your hoverboard out. And please only drive inside the tunnel in directions of the arrows. The other way around, you could crash into another person coming back from the roller rink. So again, um, fun way of using the posters, like it's like slapped on advertisements. Um, some of these are Winterfest posters, this one um, as well. Uh, you could use some of the uh, arcade uh, placards that we could get. Um, and just travel posters, too, if you've got nothing else going for you. So here's where you would equip your hoverboard in this little section here. I guess I have to get mine out. And then you've got the arrow showing you the direction that you need to go. So I, I shouldn't go this way. I have to go this way. Again, hover park pieces for all of the these goodies here. Get a little entrance here for those that just want to come and watch have the others play around in the little park. Uh, curved glass and uh, framed glass for um, the window workings. Again, if you're into the hover part bits and you just wanted a little extra little thing, it's like it's like the roller rink, you know, kind of deal, just wild startup. I couldn't tell you specifically the pieces. There's like over 90 different hover part pieces, so you just have to do some experimenting with what works and what doesn't. Uh, I mean, I think they're all designed to kind of interlock with each other, so it just depends on the shape. You know, I've seen some hover parks. Um, where they uh, have, you know, figure eights and multiple levels and um, hazards inserted into the tunnel. So you have to zigzag through everything or leap through a ring of fire or that kind of stuff. So you can get as complex or as simplified as you want. Um, again, a lot of it might depend on how much decor space you have, that kind of thing. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, this is next to the tunnels from the rink. You can see stairs. This way you can leave the rink if you want a short cigarette break or something from the Proto Burgers. So that would be uh, these little entrance exits, little tunnels here. Notice they're using the triangle pieces for the sides, which is interesting. It gives that angle. Um, you know, possibility of angle than if they just used uh, regular floors. Uh, this is, by the way, if you manage to jump onto the roller rink, you can find a little Easter egg hidden at the top of one of the containers, apparently working for Protostar is not that safe. So I'm not sure what they're talking about here. Let's see if I can. I think this is what they're talking about here. Okay, that's a little disturbing. So you got some blood and gore. That's kind of gross. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they're using for the... I guess it's just a smear on the container itself, but... The little chalk mark here, that's more of the um, the uh, cellar entrances. The same thing they use for the buildings, the same thing that they use for the crosswalks. 
Um, it's a little disturbing that the body's still like twitching and stuff. It's like you just caught him in their death throes or something, which is a little wrong, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, don't want to miss the little sign up here. Um, this is called the, uh, what was it called? The Star Rocket. So they've got the S, I think, or yeah, it's like the S sort of. And the R or just R for rocket? I don't know. Kind of hard to see. And then the rocket is like the little sign there. Again, most of the like skyscrapers or high rises are the metal containers. And then they've added certain details like the uh, reinforced walls, the little protostar uh, platform there. Um, here is that light. The red moonlight, I think. R for rocket. Oh, okay, and the little red star. For <laughs> See, you have to explain that stuff to me. I don't catch on. I was looking for the S here. Like a, what do they call it? A, like the two-letter thingy. And I can't even think of the name, the word. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, then we've got the the drive-in. The still we are not in the proto burger yet, but we get close. First, we'll have a short visit to the drive-in with a custom-made moped in front of it which is, I'm confused, where is that? It's not here, that's something else. Let me see. I think this is the drive-in here that they're talking about, yeah. So you've got the little um, speaker part. Looks like a kind of a lemonade shake or something. <laughs> it's basically one of the uh, Winterfest gifts inside the cup. And then using the um, detonator as a speaker. And then over here is, uh, this is, I guess, where you pay, maybe. And then this is where you pick up the food. And this is the little moped which I think is adorable. Look at this little thing. Isn't that cute? And it's basically, it looks like um, the mounted wall generator, which gives it that little animated, and it might even be making a noise. I really can't remember if it had a sound effect. But uh, uh, sandbags for the seat. Um, Looks like some of the Osun emblems and hammers for the handlebars. Uh, Chua spotlights for the little headlights here, and of course the tires. How adorbs is that? Very simple, but you know, you know what it is when you look at it. A hammer for the kickstand here. Who wouldn't want to ride around on this? It would be so fun if they would have like a little competition for people to submit their ideas for these like little junky creations and actually make it as an actual one. That would be super fun. It would be a, an amazing incentive for some really creative building, I think, if they would come up with something like that. Okay. Um, so did I miss this? Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and... Uh, can't tell if it's actually on here or not. I think it completely went past that. Oh, okay, yeah, I skipped over. My bad. <laughs> the next to the tunnels from the park is the the smoking um, smoking area. I guess I didn't come out to it when it, I mentioned it, but this is what this is. I love the little hover seats. It's, um, I think it's, uh, I want to say it's the, um, 
I don't know what those are. Is that the, oh, the little fan thing? Can't tell just by looking at it. And then, of course, one of the um, holograph bits, the, the, the small one, not the real long one. Uh, the tables themselves, again, are those uh, wagons with one of the uh, blue light lounge tables stuck on top. I really like the hover seats idea. That's, I don't think I've seen anyone use it, use that idea before. Porthole windows and the hollow projectors, huh? I thought the porthole window was the same on both sides, but I guess it isn't. It's been a while since I've messed around with them. But I, I love that idea for sure. Um, the little canopy itself um, is actually one of the blue light lounge tables upside down. So you just see the base. And that's being used as the roof um, base. Just a, a framed glass with some lights. Very cute. I like that. I, I really like the, the hover seat idea. I think that's a very upgraded, updated, wild starry way to make. I mean, I think most of us, when we do picnic tables and stuff, we just make normal seats and stuff. This is a, a very fun use of that. I don't, I wouldn't be surprised to see more people do that now. <laughs> okay, so. Um, finally, the Proto Burger. Uh, is coming. Um, just have a look around. On the bottom level, we have the typical fast food diner with a refill soft drinks uh, station, several seating areas, as well as standing tables, a little showcase with glasses, and of course the counter with adjustable heights for different races and custom made food in the back. Uh, next to one register, you can see a proto meal with fries, soft drink, and a burger. So we pass the drive through. And we come around uh, to the other entrance here. So let's just take a look out here. Um, this, I think, is where uh, you come and bring your empty trays when you're done eating. So they got the shelves. Again, these are exile uh, walls and then Orin walls to make the trays. Um, these booths are just chua pillows. Uh, very simple. It's a little bit of edged with um, exile floors just to make it clean up a little bit better because the pillows are kind of lumpy dumpy. So, you know. Uh, the countertop here for the little like bar area is um, travel posters. Always nice for a metal kind of counter. Um, we see that in kitchens a lot. I, it's probably one of my favorites. Um, typical for some of the restaurants, the fast food places, they have a little bit of greenery. They just put in a couple of overgrowth there. Um, it's nice and simple. And keeping with how usually it's a mirrored image from side to side kind of thing. Here's the other entrance on this side. This one's got, um, this could be where maybe uh, they have some menus or um, uh, it could be, I, I've been in a few where they have like actual, they're promoting like tourism in the city and they'll have like brochures and stuff of other places you could go in and check out. Um, if you're wondering about the little coconut monkey thing, that was from a special promo. I don't, I don't think it's available anymore. So if you didn't get a hold of one when it was out, um, you just kind of missed out. I don't know if they plan on bringing that particular promotion um, again at any time. But uh, we see it every now and then. Um, here we have the public restrooms. Again, it's just the spaceship doors or windows being used as doors. And then... Um, just having that archway kind of thing. 
Some actually go through the trouble of differ differentiating between male and female. Um, we've seen some use uh, the neon signs for that. Others just use like a circle triangle piece and, and you know make it look like a girl's dress or whatever. Um, here we have the drink dispensers. Uh, now if you see these bits with the books, um, I think they're being used as napkin holders. And the white pages of the book serve to represent napkins. Uh, I think we saw it in the other place with the little food area. And I forgot to mention it. But it's the same uh, drink stand as before. Again, it's a great way of showing off the different posters you have access to um, by representing different soda drinks. Um, I've seen a few use that for like uh, vending machines as well. Or either sodas or candy bars or you know whatever they want to pretend that's in the machine and using the little uh, posters as uh, representing the different brands again uh, the uh, flat metal tables mostly little to a floor and then the graded shelf Over here we have the order stations using um, Dominion benches for the countertops. And you can see again the trays, they've got them ready to put on their orders. Uh, control uh, panels for the, the cashiers, the registers. Um, here there's the little display case. Often it's uh, for like representing either some of the dishes that they serve if they're like have a special um, Sometimes they show off like the little toys that, that comes in the Happy Meal things and that kind of stuff um, But this one looks like they're showing different types of maybe uh, special drinks that they've got going on Again, not sure what this might be it could be another display case for uh, again, a special burger that they're making or something. Uh, up above, it's just archways. And then I think it's, yeah, the Marauder display being used as the order screens. Uh, this would be where you would see the different types of things that are on the menu. And then here's that little sample meal. You've got um, the cup which you would fill at the drink station. You've got your little uh, burger box, which in this case is one of the locked exile chests. You've got, um, I guess it's supposed to represent a bag of fries, which is basically just one of the wheat things. Oh, okay, is this like a donation box or something? I get it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, my leg is itching. Um, this would be a great place to put maybe some. Um, if you want, I, I know this squeeze out of space, but I'm going to mention it anyway for those that might want to have a donation box. You know, maybe for like in a church or something even. Um, if you're needing some money, the uh either the gold piles or the stacks of plastic coins are good if you're looking specifically something for like um like bill money i honestly can't think of anything that would simulate that unless maybe you just took some a particular travel poster that kind of looked like money the way it's just the design on it maybe and then just color shifting it all green and having just a, a little pile, a loose pile of travel posters that are green and pretend that that's like bill money kind of thing. Maybe if you mix that in with the, the coins, that would even help sell the idea better. That's the only thing I can think of. And I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like a napkin or, or what. But uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, back here we have um, the little trays where the burgers are already in their boxes. 
Again, it's just staircases here for the little shelves, which is really smart. It saves on decor space. Um, here we have some of the burgers and fries in waiting. You got the double, like the Big Mac here, and then the little cheeseburger here. Again, it's just bowls. And then over here, you've got another. It could be tacos. It could be chicken wrap. You know, you've got those little burrito wrap thingies that you can get. <laughs> that's true. I guess that's true. Uh, let's see. Moving up the stairs. Get to the stairs here. Make sure I follow this guy as close as possible. Moving up the stairs, we'll get to the Proto Cafe here as well. We have a typical fast food cafe um, with a high-end uh, coffee machine, cookies, and a comfy, relaxing zone, and of course, the kids' area. And yes, indeed, in the ball pit is an Orin and a Draken playing along. Fun for everyone. So here you have the bar. Again, a lot of this is uh, Hover Park pieces for the uh, not only the countertop, but the cabinetry back here. The little cabinetry here. Um, you've got uh, shelves. They could have added um, uh, handles for uh, the different uh, drawers or cabinets or whatever. Um, but again, You've got that indication that is something here. I guess this is the fancy coffee machine. It's basically um, graded floor panels, and then you've got uh, draken walls for a lot of the body of it. Um, you've got the graded floor panels down here, the different kinds of mugs, um, the little buttons, which are basically the uh, blue light lounge tables. You've got the magnetized containers, just the edge of them to indicate that these are heated up, that there's some kind of cooking process going on. And then the graded um, panel here that you get from uh, the uh, Arcterra place. Um, this towel rack here, that I believe is actually part of the regular bar. Um, it's just sunk in so that you just see the, the metal bar or whatever that's there but it's like the drinking bar and uh, stuff again fun use of the uh, Winterfest posters notice they color shifted one just to make it look a little different can't forget to mention this here where the cookies are Again, how detailed you go into your food items and stuff will greatly depend on, you know, the amount of space you have left. Um, the Orin windows are a big favorite because they're already brightly colored. They look like icing cookies, um, like um, sugar cookies that have that nice hard icing on them. So they're a perfect um, uh, representation of cookies, not only because of the bright coloring, but also the flat shape. Um, but we've seen some others create some interesting ones. We've, uh, I myself have done like chocolate chip ones. Um, that's a little more complex because whereas they can get away with one window for a single cookie, with the chocolate chip cookie, then you have to think of something that will make the chocolate chips. And depending on what it is, it's likely going to be, you know, five or six pieces just for the chips. Um, but I used upside down bowls for those. Um, We've seen some others come up with various different. We did some Christmas cookies using the fireworks pieces, which worked out really nice. So again, it depends on how detailed you can get as to what items you use. Um, but really, anything can go on these, uh, especially in a setting like this, where you're not really concerned about what's sticking down below. Um, anything that's just round a shape, um, you could get away with using um, like uh, the dynamite, um, some of the tanks. Um, but again, if you're looking for color, 
a lot of the orange decor is probably where you're going to head because they have the bright stuff. Now the color shifting does give you a little bit more variety, but again, it will depend on you know your your financial situation. If you have the the service tokens or the um, the cash to spend on it, you know more power to you. But I prefer when folks actually kind of are a little stingy with it. Um, you don't want everything color shifted. You just want little things, you know, just little hints every now and then. I think that's much, uh, there's more impact that way for me. Um, the ends of this little display case, of course, is the gear lamps. I don't think they actually give off any light. Um, I'm not even sure if they, I, I suspect they count towards the light limit, but I'm not positive on that. But I know for sure they just don't seem to give off any light at all, which is frustrating. But uh, there you have it. Let's see. Um, kitty area. How do we get into this thing? I guess you don't get inside, inside it. It's a faux door here, and you can see, like, there's a little table for the kitties. Um, again, the red balloon issue is annoying. Uh, because of the wind, how it affects that particular item. It used to not be that way. It used to just stand straight up and down. But I guess they wanted to make it look a little bit more realistic, like it was floaty, but it's just so strongly affected by the wind. It's just ridiculous. I mean, it's practically horizontal at times, so it's it's awkward, especially for those of us that used it in situations like for Christmas decorations, like using the the brambles as like the holly bush and then having the balloons as the berries and now the berries are like just jumping all over the place and um, yeah it's a little frustrating that way but uh, you have a little reading area and a little play area and a little eating area this would be great for if you want to pretend like um, you're bringing the kitties to a little birthday party kind of thing Notice they're using the tree tables as stools, which is kind of cute, too. Over here, you have the ball pit, which is behind some cage bits. And then, as they said, there are um, Draken and Orin in there rumbling around. They're using berries and eyeballs and such for the actual balls. Um, we've seen one in the past that had a ball pit. He used um, uh, not only uh, the actual sporty spheres, um, but he took like uh, the domes and sandwiched them into pairs and made balls out of those. Now with the color shifting, that would probably be even easier. We've also got the summer decor, which has the beach balls that could be used. Um, the eyeballs are good. That's those really bright, like pink ones. As long as you have the eyeball part, the the pupil facing away, it looks pretty good. Um, some use the files. Uh, just tuck those in so you don't see the long end, and that will work as a round ball. Um, I'm sure there's some other things, but those are the ones that come to mind. Notice the uh, the window treatment. It's just uh, unframed glass overlapping with using the colored ones like these little patterns. And again, hover part pieces for a lot of it. See a little touch of color shifting just to make it look a little different. I love the little votive candles and the glass. This is where the parents go while the kids are wreaking havoc over there. <laughs> Excuse me. Here you go. Here's an example of changing a poster up to look like something else. So it looks like he's showcasing a burger instead of a Christmas wreath. <laughs> okay. Uh... Getting out of the proto burger. Let me get out of the proto burger here. Now there's three exits to this thing, so I'm not sure if I'm going to go out the right way, but 
This is, uh, again, on the sidewalk in the Noble area, which I guess would be this way. Uh, we'll now move to our last station on the outside area, but before we reach it, we will see another small Easter egg. You may have seen him in the distance, um, but on the sidewalk actually stands a Mordesh amongst some rubble looking up to a window. Let's see. Oh, okay, I think I see words. This way. And it says, um, the window is open and you can see drapes and some clothes <clears throat> flying out. So what have we here? It says, ah, oh, yes, it is Gomez, one of the famous musicians on Nexus, or at least that is what he thinks. Sadly for him, his beloved wife, Morticia, uh, sees this a teeny bit differently. And so she has thrown him out again and again and again. Poor guy. So he's got all his belongings strewn out onto the sidewalk here. Here's the, the drapes and all of his stuff. I guess she's had enough of him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so now it's to the underground. This is the last stop before we get to the bunker in the back next to the roller rink behind a phone booth. Go this way. Find the phone booth. Uh, we can see a deranged, deranged door dangling in the entrance to an old industrial building. I guess that's here. Okay, so it's kind of like broken. But first let me talk about the the phone booth. We've seen some of these, um, especially for those that like to build with TARDIS. It always, I, I think it's supposed to be like a phone booth, but this is a fun example of one. It's um, the graded floor panels for the top and then uh, the metal dividers for most of this other bits. And I think graded floor panels or travel posters to cover up some of the lights so that you only see the windows up top. You got a little phone book in there. Really cute. It's kind of a must for any city thing, especially if you're kind of dating it or trying to match it to a certain theme. Um, if you're looking for more of a British thing, I guess you could uh, color shift it to a red, maybe. I don't know. You probably turn the windows pink. Uh, let's see. So in the back of the building, um, behind some crates and rubble, after opening a cage door, you can see a trap door which leads to the sewage system beneath Proto City. So behind some bits. Let me not fall in straight away. Great use of the Granok hatch. Um, a lot of people were upset because it has it's not functional like a normal door would be. They do have a um, hatch door that now is functioning, but I think you have to get it through some of the Red Moon stuff. Um, so it's not a very common item, um, but this is always fun. It indicates that this typically would be closed with this and it's just kind of propped open. So now we're in the sewer system here. Again, you can see some of the red moon tubing. It looks like tentacles. Um, and you've got uh, waterfalls and red moon vents here. Make sure I'm not missing anything. It says, uh, following the tubes, you will get... Um, to only one last room with a huge sewer door 
And from here, we finally get to the underground disco. Just open the server the sewer door and enter the bunker. So we follow the winding pipes. This is a, a good example of where leaving the clutter on your base ground um, works really well. It gives it that overgrown kind of weedy um, look to the sewer system without having to add in your own greenery. I have to hop on there. Oop, you had it. There we go. Open door. A little tricky sometimes. Okay, so now we're into the uh, underground disco. Um, it is designed after some rave discos, uh, which means get an old factory, an in old industrial area, a garage, or something like that. Have some more raver fellows and equipment you can easily place and remove before the cops get to your secret location and then have fun at our party. In this case, the party is an old is in an old maintenance area in the sewer system beneath Proto City. Uh, you should have a look at the floor and the ceiling. So um, you can see that they're using a generator for the floor. Gives you that old fan look and then the ceiling uh, as well. Has some grading and stuff. Really dark. Got some golden arrows showing you what direction to go. Again, using some of those haunted or train windows to bring in some lighting. These are the protostar windows. Some of my favorite windows. It's great for a cityscape if you're trying to make um, like some uh, skyscrapers and stuff and you need some windows that are really they're bright, even though they don't give off any light. They give that illusion to it. It works the same way as the metal dividers. You can see most of this part here is um, the rain uh, gutters to make it look like old industrial piping and stuff. Oh, wow. Definitely looks pretty grungy. <laughs> uh, but uh, the flooring is uh, basically some of that um, graded floor stuff that you get from Arctera. Look at the chains, the hanging chains. Uh, keep in mind, the hanging chains have no collision whatsoever. So if you want them to have some kind of blocking where people can't actually pass through them like this, um, I would say use, I don't know, maybe, uh, I don't know what, because like even the, um, the sparking wire, it has no collision whatsoever either. So neither one of them do it. It's unfortunate, but in some ways it's fun because like people will hang up multiples of these and make a like a bead curtain kind of look, and it's great. Oh, <laughs> ceiling. I can't see the ceiling. Where is that? I see, like, the weeds hanging off and the piping. I don't know what bits are being used for these moving parts. This looks like a box of bolts here. I suspect some of this is, um, I think there's a cannon that has the metal uh, moving gears. Um, or maybe it's one of the, um, the windmills, like the dreg windmill thing. I'm not positive. I think this is the engine part. Um, let's see. Let me make sure I'm reading. 
Uh, at the bottom area is the dance floor with the smoke, music, and lights. On the left of those are uh, on the left are those sticky, gooey sitting stairs. You might know them. We have them often in basement, dark, gothyish clubs. On the right are some cages and a tire swing, if you can call it that way. And in the back, you'll get to the upper floor and the toilet rooms. So the dance floor again uh, is. The smoke and stuff that you see, uh, I think most of that is from the smoke pack that you get from the vendor itself. Now, this big puff of steam, I think that's from one of the uh, Osun items. I imagine it's maybe something that's really big because I don't remember any of the big um, smoke or uh, gas things having that kind of animation. This looks like that thing from the one that's got like the head a uh, bit to it, but I'm not positive. But the lingering uh, little puff clouds, um, those are a big fave for industrial areas because um, we've seen some of the city ones use it like as a form of smog to kind of represent um, that's really cluttered up with bad smelling stuff. We've also seen folks use it for like their dump piles for garbage to make it look smelly. Because uh, typically before all we had were like the um, the uh, witch's brew it has kind of like the smoke coming up. We've seen them use that. Now we have the, the smoke packs. We've also got the uh, toxic barrels. That's another favorite for making it look kind of smelly and gross. Ah, uh, the Osun Witch Altar. Okay. I knew it was something along the lines. It's got those little puffs of steam. That's a real fun way of using it. You don't see the, the item itself. You just see the effect. Well, that's weird. So there's actually more smoke in here than we can actually see. That's a shame. But, you know, you always find some really quirks. Of course, you've got your disco ball thing going on. And the DJ. Okay, so to the left, this is where you would come and sit and watch. Uh, remember the splotches? Those are the eye splotch. It's just flipped over so that you don't see the eyeball and you just get the, the little gooey drop bits. Uh, again, color shifting might uh, come in handy for making it look a little different if you want a different color. Um, here, this reminds me of the upside down um, frost spore, but I'm not positive for like another spill, I guess. See what was on the right? Oh, looking for a tire swing and stuff. Here we go. Here's the tire swing. And it's supposed to be some, I guess these are just the dance cage here. See how the sparking wires have no clue, so I couldn't actually walk on the wire, which is crazy, but I guess it's fun. It's tough for those wanting to use the sparking wire as like um, bars for like a prison. Um, I think I mentioned in the past where some have actually used a combination of the sparking wires and pillars to kind of put enough of a, an, a solid item, but spacing it just enough so that it fits. Um, you could also use just the an unframed glass or something to kind of make it look like it's empty, but it's not sort of. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but there you go. Uh, here is the the WC, the water closet, the bathroom. Again, it looks to be neon signs being used for that. And 
our favorite toilet there. Uh, this, I think, is one of the newer Red Moon items, the sign. If you don't have access to that one, you could uh, just use the regular Marauder sign. Um, it won't be flashy like this one, but uh, still fun to use. Upstairs. Make sure I'm getting all this here. Uh, on the upper floor, uh, we have a bar and some not-so-nice rooms where you can chill, chill and relax and do illegal things. <laughs> have a look at this one specific room with the needle and the drugs. You will know which one when you see it. That sounds promising. Just what kind of things are going through your head to make, <laughs> make these things? I don't know what this is. What is that? Is that like one of those um, columns? Uh, Elden columns, I think is what it, I'm not sure. Let's, let's go to the middle here first. I think this is the bar. Again, using those hover things is like hovering seats. I love that idea. It's a little scary. I was a little creeped out right there because I thought I was going to fall through. But <laughs> I love this little setup here. This is a great way of doing this. And it suits the uh, roundabout um, bar thing here, which uh, works really well. They just got the Marauder sign. Uh, Lots of curved glass for these strange little tubes. It's almost, almost kind of like a chandelier kind of thing going on. It's really elegant looking for such a grungy place. <laughs> but I like the look of this. This looks it's simple, but it's you know kind of an interesting design, and it plays into that whole uh, circle look to it. I like that a lot. This here is, see, again, like a beaded curtain. So I guess, I don't know, this is some sitting place where they come and have a smoke, I guess. I like how the chains are uneven. It just makes it look a little more tacky, you know, like it's not being kept up nicely. Here's a little uh, game of cards. Like how they change the details just a little bit to make each room its its own thing. Okay, I guess this is the druggy room. This is just so wrong. <laughs> Siskwi, shame on you for putting all this in. So you got the splotches with some kind of messy looking stuff. You've got, um, look how much detail into the syringe. You've got the clear um, curved glass. You've got the little pumper thing. The strap to tie on the, the snowy heels. This is so wrong. <laughs> This is not good at all. Snowy Hill for the drugs, I guess, and then the syringe for I don't even know what's being used for the little ends here. It's just so tiny. How you put that together, I would imagine you probably did it real big and then shrunk it down or something. I don't know. You got the spoon over here, the little cubes of whatever that's supposed to be. <laughs> Sprinkle some crack on there, I guess. Got the candle for melting it into the spoon. That's just that's just wrong. Big pile of beers. I have one of those and I still haven't used it. It's so 
bad because it's a really fun item, but I don't know. This is pretty disgusting. Look at the... And it, I know it's probably wrong, but it just like it looks like pea-covered documents there, trash, because it's yellow. It's kind of gross. <laughs> I'm probably wrong for thinking it, but that's what comes to mind when I see the yellow paper. It's like someone had an accident. I like the paper towel dispenser. This would be great in the kitchen, even. To using the double roll of toilet paper as like a paper towel dispenser. I like this too because it, it looks like you know you got the claw and saying you know wipe your hands off. The needle pin is the hover part pieces and the handle is a detonator. Yeah, I figured because <laughs> yeah, Peggy eighteen. That's right, floods. You know sometimes uh, that's probably why I'm. Uh, I get nervous if I haven't fully toured the house before I show it because sometimes you come across things that you're not quite sure about and it can be a little uh, questionable because I mean there are some plots that it's like the one with um, it was like this beautiful beach area up top but then you go down below and it's like a torture chamber they got like the the Iron Maiden and and uh, the one with the wood blocks and the cuffs on it and everything. And you're thinking, whoa, that's not what you expect. So I try to preview these places beforehand. But, yeah, sometimes you go into some dark corners of people's minds here. So you never know what to expect. But yeah, I imagine the needle, you would have had to build it a little bit bigger and then shrink it down because that, that was just outrageous, the detail on that. Um, I don't know what they're using for the puddles here. Uh, flat end of a stone, uh, the, the frost spore or something, something curvy on the bottom. And it looks like they might have color shifted because that looks like brown which I'm not even want to think about what that might represent, but what kind of lighting did you use in here? Is it one of the like noir colors for the lighting? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the door there. So windy, and I'm going to get lost here. Sepia. Okay. I couldn't remember. I don't really change. I'm like super lazy or completely unimaginative when it comes to lighting and skies. I usually just go with the defaults and leave it at that. Probably bad that I do that, but that's that's me. Let me just come out of the sewers here. It looks hazy now that I've been in that dark area. Was it always hazy? Well, I can safely say that we only have time for this one today. <laughs> I'll uh, definitely um, try and uh, visit the other places uh, next time that we come to Jabot. Um, but as I suspected, this became just a full-on uh, project to go through this as detailed as we did. Again, hover part pieces for this roof. I love this. I'm kind of just going off track here because I want to get a good shot of the city itself. And, and look at the little uh, drive through thing here, the emblem. It's like um, a pumpkin. It looks like a banana and uh, a dome and I don't know what else. Kind of creepy looking, actually, if you ask me. Um, I forget the name of the sky. It's Pixel something during the arcade stuff, I think, that it was available. 
but to look at the the buildings this is awesome I, I love plots like this I'm not very creative when it comes to architecture so seeing someone put something together like this and make it look like it just came like that that's just fun uh yeah I think I've heard some talk about that I, th I think there's one where they like use the um the glass and it like turns it bright when it's actually dark so it's it's really weird how that works in the lighting down in the in the bunker house I've never really experimented with it myself but I know a few other builders that have um, so yeah um, I hope you uh, had a fun time um, I know uh, there are lots of fun ideas um, that you could take from this um, and be able to incorporate it. I mean, even if your plot isn't a city theme, there are so many little ideas, you know, like the sidewalk pieces. Uh, you know, if you're looking for um, something to use as white uh, lettering, even these would work out great. Uh, some of the seating ideas, uh, the building ideas. You know, I'm sure if someone really put their mind to it, they could probably find a way to um, use the brick and stuff and still be able to get inside the building in some manner or fashion. But I, I love these faux buildings. They're, they're so in, they bring a lot of character to uh, typically when you come in across like a town plot or something, they just use you know the floors or the walls and leave it at that. And to be able to come up with a way of using a different item for the structure is uh, interesting to me. I think that's really fun. So yeah, um, well, it was just the one plot <laughs> to squeeze in the spotlight. Um, I hope you guys had fun, enjoyed it. Uh, definitely join us next week. We will be back on Entity Side. Um, Again, I'm trying to give equal treatment to both uh, regions, um, so we're alternating between the two. Um, if you don't have the opportunity to join us live, um, be sure and just check out the YouTube. Uh, we have all of our videos go straight there after we're done broadcasting, so if you miss any or want to see some again, um, especially if you kind of remember a house but you're not sure um, if we've seen it or not, or you just want to look at it again, and maybe it's already gone, um, the videos are there for you to be able to bring them up again. Because as I said, we have a lot of builders that, uh, even though they may have multiples of alts to be able to build on, uh, eventually they run out of space, and so they end up clearing out one and rebuilding it to something else. So having these little videos is like keepsakes. Um, not just for memento reason, but for posterity, for folks that want to see what it used to look like, that kind of stuff. Um, be sure and visit that. Um, so, yeah, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great day, a great and wonderful week. Um, uh, hopefully the weather uh, persists to be this nice. It was super, super warm last week, um, but the temperatures have broken, so we're having some cooler weather. Even the sun's not out at the moment, which is fantastic. Um, overcast days are A-OK -okay with me. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think there was anything new as far as the, um, the upcoming holiday stuff. I don't think they have another event for this weekend. I'm not really positive about that. But I do recall them mentioning that they've updated the communities um, feature on the PTR. I think that's what they said. Um, to incorporate a lot of the fixes and suggestions that have been given in. So assuming that is still on the PTR and available, if you haven't checked it out yet, um, including myself, um, maybe you can find an opportunity to do that, uh, to uh, impart your feedback and to improve it that much more for when it actually does come out. Again, there's not been any specific date as far as release for that particular feature. Just sometime this year, probably towards the end maybe, I don't know. Um, but as soon as we know some finite details on that, um, I will be sure and share those um, for those of you that have 
you know, been looking forward to it. I do know there are some builders that are already taking a hiatus in anticipation of the community's feature being released. Um, because I think a lot of folks are a little bit nervous about building something new and then having to revamp it just for the community's part once it's introduced. So um, I think Maddie mentioned about going on a bit of a break. I'm on a break, not necessarily related to the release of that feature, just because I've been super busy and uh, just haven't had a time. I, I haven't even actually hardly played at all, period. So um, it's just maintaining the stream and, and getting uh, the, the uh, tours, keeping them going has been my main goal. And I'm just glad that I'm able to do at least that, if nothing else. So um, don't uh, be dis uh, disparaged if you don't see a lot of builders on right now or in the next month or so, um, because it just may that be that they're wanting to take a break until that feature actually kicks in. And then hopefully we will see an explosion of building efforts. Um, crossing my fingers, maybe I will get into it too once it hits, but uh, no promises. If nothing else, I will keep up with the, um, the stream and will show off what other people are bringing out. Um, yeah, Flood, I think that's, again, I think that's part of the reason why um, people are kind of going, whoa, 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 if we're going to have this feature coming out, maybe I should hold off on putting any kind of new project in because it's just like when they increase the size of the plot with the big free-to-play changeover kind of thing, um, suddenly the position of the entrance changed and that really borked up. I mean, you can kind of tell where you come onto a plot where the, the builder hasn't been there for a long time because it's like this little nugget in the middle of the plot where they just left it as it was and they haven't you know revamped it or modified it slightly to adjust to the changes and I suspect folks are kind of worried about how that's going to work when the communities come in um, because there was already issues on the PTR where things were bleeding over to the other plots. Like if they had a super enlarged item, uh, completely oversized, it would bleed off onto the other, uh, the next door plot. And that could be problematic. So I think folks are just kind of taking a bit of a, a step back and looking forward to the feature, but also with a little bit of trepidation as to what exactly it's going to entail to be able to um, modify or update their existing plots to be able to fit because uh, yeah it's it's there's a lot of what ifs i think uh, still and um so yeah like i say if you don't see a lot of people building right now a lot of new stuff um, don't be discouraged about that um, it's not that uh, people are giving up on housing i think they're just kind of holding their breath to see what's going to happen and how it's going to work. And because, um, again, even though it's a, a very much desired feature, um, last I heard, it's rather an expensive one. So even those that might actually want to take part in it might not be able to immediately. And um, in some ways, that might be good. They'll be able to see other people, how they fit it in and how they work it. and the the pitfalls that they might encounter and be able to learn from their experiences before they actually get into it themselves so it should be interesting to see how it works um, so yeah uh, it's something to look forward to um, for certain on that um, and of course you know as we continue on um, I'm sure we'll be getting some additional decor I think they just brought out some of the Mordash stuff again I think I saw uh, the sandcastle stuff um, with summer really coming in I wouldn't doubt that additional summer decor comes out with like the beach falls and stuff um, so yeah it, there's a lot to look forward to um, there's still room for you know playing around if you just want to tinker around with some projects different idea this would be a perfect time for little projects like playing around with different furniture ideas or uh, something like that, or just goofing around with, you know, maybe you want to do a painting real quick and, and kind of mess with that um, idea. A lot of people don't uh, don't want to dedicate to something like that if they have a big project going on. But if you're putting those on hold 
for now, then the smaller projects might be something to, to look forward to, just, just to occupy yourself. Um, so yeah, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Appreciate the continued support um, via the Twitter, uh, retweeting, um, the, uh, the follows, the, uh, the joining in chat and everything. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, have fun with whatever you're planning on to do, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.